Hello everyone, it's Raven here, and today I have a few battle replays for you, and it's going to be about creating a concept that I like to do in most of my battles, if not all of them, if possible, and that is called creating a bad neighborhood, all right? So it's kind of a funny concept, it sounds funny, it is funny, really. Um, uh, you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. So basically, what is a bad neighborhood, right? A bad neighborhood's a place you don't want to be. And uh, <laughs> think of somebody just walking down the street and just getting absolutely jumped and just destroyed, right? So who, who exactly is the leader of my neighborhood? It's going to be King Lewin, right? And the, the neighborhood's going to consist of my army. And then it's going to try and get rid of that one person that just is walking down the street that I just really don't want. And that's this guy, the Glade Lord, right? Glade Lord on a dragon, he's going to be a very tough opponent. He's got the Helm of Discord. Oop, let me highlight him here. He's got the Helm of Discord. He's got the Call of the Wood so he can buff himself up and anybody around him with bonus melee attack. And he's going to destroy my frontline stats with this Helm of Discord. This is an absolutely just horrendous debuff that you can get on your guys. They're not going to be doing much. So if you take a look, minus 27, minus 26. These guys are pretty much just going to be swinging around wet noodles, not hitting anybody. And they should be doing very good against these Eternal Guard otherwise. But with that Helma Discord, my Battle Pilgrims, which would typically win in a one-on-one -on -one fight, would just do nothing at all. And that's what I don't want. And then, you know, of course, getting beamed down by Dragon Breath is just absolutely something you don't want. So right here, he has two units in the air. Two very powerful units when teamed together, and I only have King Luan in the air. So he's like, okay, if King Luan gets low, I can bring in my guys and just absolutely lay a whooping on King Luan and just take him down, right? So I'm going to play that to my advantage. He thinks he can win. King Luan is an amazing combatant. Do not ever think that, you know, you can just take him on 1v1 and be completely fine. You never know if I'm going to come in with my Lore of Life caster here or somebody else and just turn the fight in my favor. So what, what I'm going to do is a bait, it's a bait and switch, right? I'm going to bring Luin in. If he gets low, I'm going to try and bait this dragon into the pocket of my neighborhood, which is going to be these archers right here. I have some peasant bowmen with fire arrows, and I have two mounted yeoman archers, right, to be able to chase down anybody I want shoot them down with arrows. And these guys have poison attack, so it slows them down as well. Maybe my knights can catch back up and get them too. So what's going to happen is if I can pull him in and I can just start obliterating him with the focus fire of five range units, that's just going to absolutely melt him. And then for King Luin, I have an ability here called the Lion Shield. Now, I used to not like this ability because I didn't see a whole lot of use out of it. But against certain factions, uh, now that like we have Warhammer 2 and everybody does magic damage and fire damage and poison attacks and all sorts of stuff like that. Missile resistance and magic resistance plus 44 to both is huge. So King Luan already has 20% physical resistance and a missile resistance of 15% by himself. So he's going to have almost 60% uh, missile resistance. So if we take a look at the Lord over here, this guy, you know, he looks like he's going to be a Thunderdome when he runs in here. And it's actually the Glade Lady. I thought it was the Glade Lord. He actually has the Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, they added the bow to both the Glade Lady and the Glade Lord. That's a fun fact. So um, this guy actually does magic damage. So if I pop that buff on him, he's going to be negating 44% of that damage, which is huge. So uh, let's just take a look at our armies right here, and then you'll see the concept get pulled off. So right here in the front line, I have some Battle Pilgrims, which are great. They have high weapon strength and pretty decent melee attack, melee defense for a very low-cost unit, and they have shields. Shields is probably the most important thing you can have against the Wood Elves, right? Wood Elves are my favorite faction. They have that range superiority in every single way that you can imagine. So right here we have the, uh, what's, what are they called? The Hawkeyes of Drakira. These guys are absolute powerhouses when it comes to throwing down at long range battles. 190 range. That is the longest range in the game for any non-Lord unit. So that's that's pretty cool. Well, I guess the uh, the Tomb Kings have longer range, but if you talk in terms of just regular archers, these guys are the, the pinnacle of range, and they do really good damage too, and especially because they have the Smoke Bomb, which you'll see later in this battle be activated, and the Hawkish Precision. They do more damage when people aren't within 70. So if you think about 70 meters, it's probably about right here. These dudes have the range up to right here. They have ridiculous range, so about right there is 70. If they're not within 70, they're doing extra damage, which is huge for them. So these guys are going to be really good in taking the front line, and so does, so does the peasant mob. You know, I just had a little bit of money left over, so I just spent the 200, get some peasant mobs. And then, of course, having anti-large is huge against the wood elves. You never know if they're going to go heavy with tree ken, and then fire arrows are going to be great against tree ken and other things like that because they have a weakness to fire. And then over here on the sides, you need to have some sort of pressure against any kind of wild riders they might have or Sisters of the Thorn. So I brought Knights of the Realm. I did want to bring Grail Knights, but, you know, if they had brought the Starfire Shaft, uh, Glade Guard, they, 
well, they would just absolutely tear them apart. So I just didn't want to invest that much money. So I have two Knights of the Realm on either side with these Mounted Yeoman Archers, and they're just going to be kind of working in tandem together. And over here, I have the Damsel with the Lore of Life. She's got Regrowth and Life life Bloom and what is it called? Earth Blood to be able to heal up all my guys. Uh, sorry, guys. It's been a long time since I've played, so I'm kind of having to remember all the stuff on the fly. And I also brought her an item to get her more Winds of Magic and to give uh, damage resistance to anybody I choose. Could be King Luin, could be these Battle Pilgrims, could be a Peasant Mob. Throw the Peasant Mob in there, give them 22 peasant uh, damage resistance. You know, Peasants deserve the little bit of help they can get from anybody. Uh, so over here, if we take a look at my opponent's army, you know, he's got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of spears. And it's, that's really good for him. You know, you expect cavalry from Bretonia, and you got these archers, high DPS archers, and the, the Deepwood Scouts have good damage, and they can... Um, you know, kite and shoot, but they don't have a lot of armor piercing, so they're not going to do as great as they could, uh, like Starfire Shafts against my knights, like uh, because of the low armor piercing values. But uh, these these guys are going to be the stars of the show for them. If they can just focus down anybody that's a really high value target for me, they're going to be doing. That's their element. You know, that's what they need to be doing. So let's go ahead and get into the show. So right now, I can't see anything in my opponent's army. I can only see these four spearmen right here, right? Because everything else hidden, hidden. These guys hidden. Hidden. I can't even see these uh, Sisters of the Thord back here. The only thing I can see is their Lord, the Spellsinger, and then four units of Spearmen. And I'm like, alright, that's pretty typical. I, I expect that of Wood Elves. They're either going to be hiding in the trees or have stalking units, and I was very wary of this. I, that's why I didn't move anybody up. I was like, alright. The only thing I could see is this guy. He's taking some pot shots. I'm like, maybe I'm going to fly Lewin in over here and try and distract him, maybe draw some fire. And then I'm like, okay, there they are. There they are. Deep Wood Scouts, Deep Wood Scouts. And then I'm like, oh, the Hawkeyes of Jakira. So I'm like, immediately I start trying to swerve their shots. And these guys, I try and start focusing down, get some free damage on their Glade Lord. And then over here, more archers. I was like, oh my gosh. And they get a couple shots on here before I regain micro on them. And I'm trying to do my best to keep Lewin just uh, dipping and diving, ducking, dodging, and uh, whatever else the five Ds of dodgeball were. And just trying to have them avoid these arrows as best as possible, because they're going to do a lot of damage to him. But as well, if I can have them expend their ammunition, that's going to be huge for me. The less ammo they have, the less effective they're going to be at the end of the game when I'm like really, really needing somebody to survive. But he uh, got a full-on pot shot right there from every single one of these guys. They're just absolutely nailing him. So I end up popping the wrong thing. I popped the Sword of Corone. <laughs> Which is the wrong thing that popped in the trees over there to try and mitigate some of that mitigate, excuse me, some of that damage. And I'm like, okay, well he's got half of his army over here, half of it over here, and the majority of his forces over here are just archers. We got three archers and two spearmen, right? And we got three spearmen and two archers over here. So I'm like, all right, well I, I want to take that engagement. I want to get rid of these archers. So I start pulling in everybody over here, and I had the knights of the realm trying to chase down these guys. I thought I'd be able to catch them, but you know, with that kiting and the firing and then them being like shot down by everybody, and I'm pretty sure they're poisoned at one point or another, perhaps. Uh, they just they just got gunned down, so I was like, I need to retreat. This is just a bad engagement for them. I throw a regrowth on them because they have a lot of models left. They're pretty low on HP, so I can heal them back up. King Loan over here, if he loses HP, that's fine. That's whatever. He has the regeneration over here for uh, the beloved... Ah, not that one. The Lady's Champion right here. So he gets that replenishment of HP. Great. And he's still over here wasting ammo. Look at these guys. These guys have only used up 50% of their ammunition. Like, it shows a little bit less, but it still shows that they have 11 shots left in their ammunition, just down to 10 right there. These guys are down to 13. Sisters of the Thorn are being distracted. So that's a lot of firepower being distracted, right? And my units are just free to engage here under the cover of my lord, just taking the full brunt of the... Wood Elf army just shooting him right in the dome. So that's fine. Over here, I start focusing down the Glade Lord with all my uh, ranged units if I can. Just trying to do a little bit of damage to him. I actually get quite a bit of damage off on him. He's down to about 75%, but King Lewin over here, he's hurting. He's hurting for sure. And right here, I pop the. Uh, let me see what it is. I actually don't know what buff I popped. And then I get smoke bombed right there, and I was like, oh my god, the Hawkeyes of Jakir ran underneath him and smoke bombed him. And then the blood, the blood is in the water, right? The Glade Lords over here. All right, all right, I'm gonna take this guy out. So I'm immediately like, oh no, flying shield, and stand your ground, trying to get that leadership back on. So I retain that control of him, and I get that damage resistance from the Glade Lord because it has that magic damage. And over here, I cast the uh, Dwellers Below because I thought if I could tie them up with my Damsel of the Lore of Life over here, I could get these guys and just destroy them with that spell because it absolutely does a lot of damage. So right here, this is it. This is the bait and switch. I did it pretty poorly, but it still went off. The bad neighborhood is set up. All my archers are in range of their lord. Their lord is away from their healer, who's not over here helping take out the king. He just used his dragon breath and it got interrupted, so it couldn't do as much damage as it wanted to. Let's clean up some of this nonsense. Let's get rid of all this stuff. We, we just want to see the fire arcs, you know? So, uh, 
All of my archers are able to hit this guy right here. All of them are in range. This is what I want. This is the bad neighborhood. He thinks he can win. The power of five ranged units is just absolutely obliterating this poor guy right here. And this is just not where he wants to be. Yeah, if he takes this fight with King Lewin, he can probably win if I don't start healing him up immediately with the um, with the Lore of Life caster and all that. But if, if he doesn't catch Lewin and Lewin gets away, this guy is just going to be melted by my firepower. So the, the Lore of Life caster is like, okay, I need to get in there. 110 speed to 100 speed, 100 speed to 100 speed. He's like, all right, I'm not going to be able to catch him with my dragon, but I can catch him with the Spellsinger. And right here, the dragon's just being melted. Is being absolutely melted. She pops off with the, the Earth Blood right there. Great. Perfect. And then Lewin just is like, I'm going to get away, right? He, he realizes that. And so he sends the Lore of Life over here. And the dragons start trying to take out my archers. And I put them all in guard mode, right? And then they're just, they're just going to start focusing him down. They're all going to start turning in a moment. And he's got 26, 46 HP right now. And if you take a look at the rest of the battlefield, these pilgrims are chasing out these Deepwood Scouts, followed by these peasant mobs. These guys uh, right here, these pilgrims are in a perfect engagement against these Wardens of Sithral. So these guys don't have a lot of armor. These guys don't have a lot of armor either. Ha, they have no armor, in fact. I don't actually... Oh, they, they had their armor sundered by these guys. That's their special ability right there. The uh, Let's take a look right here. It is the sundered armor, minus 30 armor. Exactly what it takes to put these guys down to zero. But these these guys are still going to put a shredding. They're, they're going to they're gonna take these guys and put them through a blender, and it's not going to be a good time. And I'm going to be able to heal them up a little bit with my Lore of Life caster, and she's got 309 weapon strength of her own and has 42 melee attacks. She's going to be landing quite a few hits on these guys, even though they have 51 melee defense. So this is a good engagement for me right now and then it's kind of tying up a lot of these units because they're like all right this this is a really high value unit this is a really high value unit i don't they don't want to forfeit this and over here uh my knights were able to get into the cookie jar and they got decimated on their own yes they got shut down by the archers but i was able to get one archer unit off the field and this archer unit got tore up and these guys got tore up and these guys are still all right i'm gonna lose micro on these guys i'm gonna go over here and then the rest of my army is still just advancing. I still got a couple units of foot squires going in over here and some pole arms, or rather one foot squire, but they're the beast slayers of Bastogne. So they're going to be doing some good damage no matter where they go. And so they're going to come in here and they're just going to tie up in combat with these wardens of Sithril as well. I'm just going to try and just put as many units onto them as possible and try and get rid of that. Because once I get rid of this one ranged unit, uh, sorry, that one spear unit, that's it. And so like I said, it's only been a few seconds since I hit play right there, right? Already down 1100 HP. This guy is being absolutely melted. Over here, King Lewin got engaged by the Spellsinger because she's like, oh, King Lewin was down to 800 HP, but I popped an Earthblood on him, and then his Sword of Corone and his, um, what is it, the, the Shield of the Lion is going to come off of cooldown any moment now and perhaps even stand your ground. And I'm going to pop all those buffs, and then it's just going to be a bad time for the Spellsinger. She does good damage, but if you think about it, 30 armor, 90 armor. 450 with AP, 390, no AP, you know? It's just, it's just not a good time. And right here, this guy couldn't even take off. He just literally walked away, got shot in the back, and died. He is just filled with arrows. This poor person. Oh, look at that. He's got, a, he's got an arrow right in his head right there. <laughs> so, so, so unfortunate. And this poor dragon just didn't stand a chance. Like, he thought, he thought, you know, he could take me out, but he came into the wrong neighborhood. The bad neighborhood concept went off. And then from this point, even though his army has, you know, the superiority of, like, class that he has much better tier units than I do in terms of cost efficiency. I still have these Beast Slayers of Bastogne, and I still have a pretty good group of Battle Pilgrims I can keep alive with this Damsel with the Lore of Life, and another pretty good group of Battle Pilgrims right here. And on top of that, I still have most of my firepower. These guys have 53 models, these have 62. These guys have almost all of their models, right? And they're going to be able to chase down anything. And then this unit right here hasn't even been touched. Literally has taken zero damage this entire fight. And if I can start focusing down their ranged units with my ranged units, if I can get in range, I will absolutely tear them apart. So we're going to go ahead and hit play here. I know I've been pausing a lot, but I'm just really trying to show you the concept. So now we have the fight in our favor. They have no Lord. Their Lore of Life caster is tied up with Lewin because he thinks that he can win. So he's going to be committed until this battle is done. But I'm like, King Lewin's not going to lose. 56 to 45 melee attack, melee defense. There goes the heal. This guy just doesn't have the same stats. And then I start popping all my buffs, right? So this poor character right here is just in the bad, bad neighborhood that it just does not want to be in. So the Sword of Crone going down, less armor, has no armor, leadership breaks. I'm just going to go ahead and chase him off with King Lewin. Uh, he doesn't need to be in this fight where he can get shot down potentially by some of these archers because the Hawkeyes of Drakir are still wandering around in the dark. They could be shooting me at any moment. Actually, they're out of ammo. So that, that, uh, that kiting I did with King Lewin at the beginning, you know, the duck dodge, duck and weave, whatever I was saying, it really worked. He has no ammo. 
What can these guys do? They're such a powerhouse unit, but now they have nothing. They weren't able to kill my knights. I still have one unit over here able to kill these spearmen. They're able to chase down some of these archers. These spearmen, they can't do anything now to focus them down. The Sisters of the Thorn are low, the archers are low, and my units are in range. And they're going to just start mowing down these poor Deepwood Scouts over here. Look at all this firepower just coming in, and immediately they're just going to be like, all right, we have to get out of here. These peasant mobs are going to be coming back. I'm going to try and intercept these two eternal guards. I see that. I start pulling in my beast slayers of Bastogne and my foot squires, excuse me, my pole arms over here to try and uh, tie these guys up as I start retreating with my archers. And these guys are able to keep shooting. They have poison, so they're slowing these guys down. And army losses just start kicking in. He just doesn't have anything to get rid of me. The Lord Blackcaster went off. That's her right there. And then King Lewin's just going to stay over here in safety in the trees, and he's going to start regenerating. And as he regenerates, the balance of power is just going to keep creeping in my favor. And then on top of that, my Lore of Lifecaster is still alive somewhere. She was doing a little bit of work healing up people, and she got two kills of her own. I'm so proud of her. Oh my gosh. You know, it's just beautiful work off of her. And so this army, I really didn't have to engage a whole lot of it. Like, I just pulled off the concept, got rid of their leadership, and then was able to take out the, the ammunition and value of these high, you know, you know, TPS units and they just the balance of power takes into effect you know into account rather that people have ammunition and what that ammunition could do and it just crept into my favor and that ended up winning the game for me so that that is the concept of the bad neighborhood taking an engagement that's bad and turning it on its head into your favorite into your favor so all those ranged units were just pouring their fire into poor Lewin and he was just absolutely taking it like a champion healing through it popping his buffs, his debuffs, trying to do some damage against the Sisters of the Thorn, took out the Spellsinger on his own, and pulled the, the Lord into the worst position possible from him, for him. He pulled him into the bad neighborhood, right? So Glade Dragons, they're just, uh, Glade Dragons, the Forest Dragons are a hammer to the anvil of the Wood Elves. They don't ever want to be the focused fire target. They want to come in and smash things, do damage, do breath attacks, or whatever, and get out of there. They don't ever want to be the target, because they don't have a lot of armor. They do have physical resistance, but it's just, it's just not enough. So now we're going to go into some other replays. I know these are a little bit old, so they're, like I said, they're, uh, I think I might have said, I've done this cast a couple of times. Uh, so the, the, the unit micro is going to get lost here and there. So the bad neighborhood concept again. Where do we want King, uh, what is this guy? Carl Franz, sorry. Where do we want Carl Franz to be? We want him to be engaging Archaon. You know, he thinks he's going to be able to take him out if he can get us around with his demigriffs, or Carl Franz could come in and just lay the smack on him, because everybody knows Carl Franz can absolutely dumpster a lord when he gets the charge on him, especially when he's on Deathclaw, because he does a lot of damage. He does an absolute fuck ton of damage, right? So let's take a look right here. He's got 345 AP. Now, uh, Archaon got buffed in this most recent patch, but this is the patch prior to that, so he doesn't quite have all that damage yet. He's still at 530 damage, right? He doesn't have the most AP, uh, but he does have a lot of weapon damage, just regular weapon damage, and he does do some uh, magical damage if uh, we were to be finding somebody with physical resistance. Unfortunately, we are not, because it's just the Empire. They don't have a lot of stuff like that. So the concept for him, get us around with the Demigriff Knights. These guys are absolutely just terrors. Just, <laughs> they will destroy people if you can surround like a horse or something like that. So poor Archaon on Dorgar is just going to be mowed down if Carl Franz can get a juicy surround on him with my Demigriff Knights. And I don't have a very good front line. Right? I just got these aspiring champions to try and hold these Chaos Marauders together with that 77 leadership and 65 over here on the flanks because they don't have that buff from uh, the aspiring champions or Archaon. And then just try and mow through. So Chaos Marauders will be like swordsmen and spearmen one on one, but when you go up against crate swords or something like that, they're just gonna they're gonna do nothing. So the the real meat and potatoes of this is uh, the Chaos Knights. I have three of them, and then two units of Dragon Ogres. If I can get a good surround on Demigriff Knights using the Chaos Knights and Dragon Ogres, and the Dragon Ogres don't take the brunt of the damage, and the the Chaos Knights do. They will absolutely just tear them apart. So right here, this is going to be a perfect example of this. Here's one kind of bad neighborhood. He's like, oh, if I just get a, you know, a charge into here on one of these guys, if maybe I lose micro, I'm going to be able to take them apart. So he starts focusing on the main line over here. Archaon's over here, so he starts charging into the most of my units, and he kind of loses micro on his Royal Artwork for fights. So they kind of charge in. They start turning to fight the Chaos Knights, and then from the back, you see my Dragon Ogres start coming in, and they're just going to lay the whooping on these poor Royal Artwork for Royal Altdorf Griffite. Sorry about that. Tongue twister. So that's a, that's a free unit. Bad neighborhood concept right there, right? And then over here we have a, a Skull of Flames coming down. I can't really remember the name of that. Skull of Fire. Flames, flaming Skull. A burning Head. Something. 
coming down. It's going to melt a lot of these spearmen right here, but unfortunately goes through my line. Starts doing quite a bit of damage to my Chaos Marauders. I thought I, typically I like click, and then I like aim over here with my mouse and click again, so it should have followed that. Maybe there's a little bit of randomness to it, I'm not quite sure. And so uh, I start pulling in my Chaos Knights. They have pretty good armor, and uh, they have pretty good charge bonus. I thought I'd be able to charge through my, my units a little bit better, but I didn't. That's, just, that's okay, though. Carl Franz over here still is not engaged. He's going to see Archaeon over here. Archaeon still has all of his buffs, right? He still has them going. He uh, he popped his standard die just to keep everybody in the fight because the Chaos Marauders, they just really need it. These guys, they routed, came back. Now they need to go back into the fight against these Spearmen or something like that. Hopefully I keep the micro on them. Maybe the, the replay is going to take it away from me, though. I'm not sure. So right now, just uh, trying to focus down these Demogriff Knights, and then he's like, all right, I need to get Carl Franz out of here. Uh, and, excuse me, Carl Franz needs to get Archaeon out of here. He comes in and gets a huge charge on him, right? Gets a huge charge, and he starts putting quite a bit of damage on him. And then Archaeon's like, oh, that's that's what you want to do, right? So he pops the Slayer of Kings, and then I buff him up with some spells, and uh, now, why can't, hold on, why can't I actually see these? That's kind of weird. Um, unit of tooltip effects, there we go. Right? Shouldn't that have put it on there? There we go. So now you can see all my buffs go down. Slayer of Kings, all that damage. The Flaming Sword of Ruin, all that damage. 934 damage. And how much of that is AP? 296. So that's still not impressive. <laughs> you still didn't get that buff from the most recent patch. But immediately just, just absolutely slams Carl Franz in the face just with an iron gauntlet. And he says... I'm not really going to put up with that today, Carl. And then on top of that, all these Dragon Ogres come in, and there's just this guy just with a dual hand overhead smash into the back. So that's just what I want. And then I'm going to be able to try and pull in and stop him with these Dragon Ogres or my Chaos Knights. And these, there's, there's just nothing he can do. You know, the bad neighborhood concept is just being able to pull a target into engagement. He thinks he's going to win and be able to kill him, just crush him. So right here, I lost Micro on Archaeon, I think. Perhaps it's just the uh, the replay going to, to shit. I'm not quite sure. But that's that's the whole that's the whole concept about it. It didn't really get to be shown as well in this replay because it is an older replay and the units don't really run around like they should. So this this does become like a straight up victory for me. I'm able to kill Carl friends and there's just nothing you can do to stop my knights and the uh, dragon ogres from just running rampant all over the field. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at one more. So it's the lizardman versus chaos. You know I've done it three times uh, and I'm going to show you all three of these times from the recent pack recent pe uh, plays that I've done, plays, the replays that I've had, excuse me, and we're just going to try and make this a little bit quick. You understand the concept, you know how these units work, you played the game, so, you know, skink cohorts, right, not the strongest of units versus chaos warriors, I'm going to mix them in with the croxagores right here, kind of an interesting build, and then I have temple guards on the flank, I see these units coming in from the side, so I'm like, all right, what's his high value targets? Obviously, Kolek, and then obviously this Dragon Ogre Shagoth. So what do I have? What do I have to make a bad neighborhood? I think about it and I'm like, all right, Skink Chief can pressure him down from the air. He's got a pretty good reload time, does pretty good damage from the air. I might be able to start shooting at him with my Pterodon Riders. If my Croxagores get on him, they don't do eight, uh, bonus damage versus large, but they do have quite a bit of AP. And of course, Krokgar is just, you know, he's a god in melee. He loves fighting big things. Anything that's cavalry sides or larger, he's just like, this is this is what I want. This is what I live for. Field day, right? And he's also got the Hand of the Gods. So if I can get him to shoot Kolek right in the face with the Hand of the Gods, that's going to do a buttload of damage. And on top of that, I'm still done with the revivification, revivification Crystal to be able to heal up my Temple Guard or Skink Cohorts for whatever reason if I choose them. And uh, these guys are just going to be the Tar Pit. They're going to take the damage of these Chaos Warriors with great weapons off of my Croxagores. So my Croxagores can go in unhindered and be able to just absolutely tear apart his front line, which is something you wouldn't think would happen to the uh, to Chaos, but you know, we're going to have that happen. Right here, I'm like, all right, I'm going to take this damage. I can, there's nothing I can do to catch these guys. I don't have anything as fast as them at all. These guys have 90 movement speed. Maybe I could catch them with my Pterodon Riders, but their movement speed rivals theirs. So if they just start running as soon as they see them, that's it. So what am I going to do? I need to pull Kolek in to an engagement he wants. He's going to go ahead and start trying to fight my Skink Cohorts or my Croxagores. He goes in for the Skink Cohorts and immediately just gets trapped right there. I pull my Croxagores ahead instead of letting them get trapped, and then he's going to try and turn around and run. Then he gets caught on this last Croxagore, and then these guys are going to block his retreat if I can. And then on top of that, Krokgar gets in here, and now he's engaged. I got my guys shooting in from the top. My Temple Guard come in. They're going to lay a, a whooping on these poor Forsaken. Over here, you can see that happening 
handily. These the Forsaken are already down to under half HP. These guys are fine. They're doing fine. They're gonna come through them, be able to pull across. And right here, you can see my skin cohort got torn apart. These guys are getting beat up pretty bad, but uh, they're gonna be doing all right. They're gonna be doing. All right. Put the uh, unit status icons back on, so you can see the health going back. Uh, let me get that going. Lock. So it's going okay in the front line, right? The fight over here, Bad Neighborhood kind of got pulled off, but Colette kind of got separated from Krokgar. Krokgar got a little bit distracted because of all these Forsaken and the Chaos Knights with Lances. I need to kind of protect my Temple Guard right here. That's a little bit too much pressure for them to be able to take, even though they are monsters versus any unarmored and armored targets, and especially versus... Um, you know, armored large targets. Right there, I got a good hand of the gods into Koleg, and this is going to be a pretty even trade. I'm on his side of the field right now, so this is kind of him pulling off the bad neighborhood on me. They got a lot of Forsaken in here. They're going to be able to punch through Krokgar, even though he does have 95 armor. Forsaken hit really hard. They are poisoned right now, but they still have 51 weapon strength, even while poisoned, which is just ridiculous. And Koleg's on Eater, of course, is just... Uh, he, he is the Reckoner, to be sure. So if he turns around and starts laying the smack on Krokgar, it's just not going to be a good time. So I try and push him through and bring my Bastilladon with Revivification re Crystal around and keep this Dragon Ogre Shagath distracted, and I absolutely just decimate his front line. And at this point, that that is it. I, I've been able to separate his leadership. These two units needed to work together to be able to beat down Krokgar and the Bastilladon, and they just weren't able to do that. So yeah, he's going to be able to get a few hits on Krokgar, but I'm going to be able to heal him up with my, my Crystal, or Cold-Blooded, or whatever. I'm going to be able to put him back up to full HP, pretty much, if I really want to. And now this is it. He's just being focused on by the Skink Chief. I got my other Skink Priest in there. I got the Temple Guards coming in. Krokgar's like, ah, oh, this is handled. He's going to go over here and try and finish off these Chaos Knights, because this is just like a, a snack for him. He doesn't even care what's going on over here. He's like, ah, oh, Chaos Knights, whatever. They're not, they have no AP, right? So he's just going to lay the whooping on them. And then he's getting thrown on by a couple of these Marauder Horsemen, but not a big deal. The real fight is done. And uh, this guy probably got micro back into this fight, but like I said, the replays are a little bit wonky, so these guys probably should have been fighting. I don't know. It's just the, the old patches do this sometimes. But uh, that that's pretty much it. This game is going to turn into a victory for me as well. And there's just... Once you get this concept to come out, you, you're going to win the game. Almost assuredly. If your leadership survives a bad neighborhood scenario, you're going to win. Because at that point, what what does he have? that can stop like my my powerhouse units going against his powerhouse units, right? This guy got pulled into a absolutely horrible neighborhood. Two Kraxagor units and Temple Guards just surrounding him. That's just not where he wants to be, right? So it's just it's just scenarios like that. You want to look obviously at what unit's good against what, but you want to pull them into a fight where you think, "All right, they're going to win this fight or are they?" And then you just get that little surround on them, stop their retreat or focus them down with ranged firepower if you know they're a squishy unit, or anything like that. If you can get that to go off, you're going to be in such good hands that you're probably going to win the rest of the game just because of that one simple tactic. Excuse me, tactic. So that's pretty much it for today. Sorry I haven't posted in forever, guys, but you got three battles in one. I know two are on an old patch, but hey, you still got to see the concept in action. Got to see an interesting build from two different... Uh, armies, and then you got to see the uh, Bretonian little army I just threw together. I'm not sure I would call it a build. It just happened to work, right? But that, that little scenario made it work. So just keep that in the back of your minds. And uh, as for, for that, guys, I'll catch you all later.